Hello everybody, I'm Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another Harry Potter video. If you still haven't seen my first three in this series, you guys can check them out, link in the description below or via the end card of this video. So today we're going to be covering my thoughts and ideas on what is missing from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. In addition, I also want to take a brief look at the nine sets that LEGO has already made over the years for the fourth film in the franchise. So going in chronological order, unlike our last three stories, the movie starts off with Harry having a dream, and in this dream we see the village of Little Hangleton and the Riddle House. We have never seen this before outside of the LEGO video games, and it's a location I doubt we'll ever get in LEGO form due to the amount of murders that occurred there. A character from the scene who I would like to see LEGO make someday, maybe in a CMF series, is Frank Bryce. Frank was an old war veteran who was the Riddle family's gardener. In the dream, we see Professor Trelawney's prophecy come to light with Wormtail at Voldemort's side, along with someone Harry doesn't know yet that we'll talk more about later. Most of the events of the book get skipped, where we have the Weasleys visit for Privet Drive and bring Harry back to the burrow. Instead, we see Hermione at the burrow waking both Harry and Ron up, and then from there the family plus two have breakfast and start their walk to find the Porky. Some other characters that we meet include Amos Diggory and his son Cedric. We have never seen Amos before, he is another character who I think should appear in a CMF line. As for Cedric, we have seen five variants of him between 2018 and 2021. With the help of the Diggories, the Weasleys, Harry, and Hermione find the portkey a manky old boot. This object then transports the lot of them to the site of the Quidditch World Cup. The campsite for the Quidditch World Cup would make for an interesting set in the style of the city people pack sets that we used to get from LEGO. We could have one or two brick built tents, banners, and flags representing the two Quidditch teams, and most importantly some obscure characters like Barty Crouch, Ludo Bagman, though you know unfortunately he was cut from the films just like Winky, and another memorable book character who I would love to see but obviously isn't necessary is Old Archie. The Weasley's tent is bigger on the inside, we could possibly see this as a set in the summer for the Deathly Hollows because the Golden Trio borrows it. The 422nd Quidditch World Cup features Ireland versus Bulgaria. Thanks to Ludo Bagman, the Weasleys are watching from the top box. With that luxury, we also get to meet Seeker Victor Crumb from Bulgaria, who we'll talk more about later. After the match, Death Eaters show up. Harry doesn't know who conjured the Dark Mark, and overall they explain it a lot better in the books. I think you're in love, Ron. Shut up. Victor, I love you. Victor, I do. Where about my heart beats only for you? Sounds like the Irish you got their pride on. <laughs> Skipping some small burrow moments from the book, we transition to the Hogwarts Express, which we have seen many times in Lego form. In the film, Harry writes to Sirius on the train, unlike in the book where he does it at the Dursleys. Also unlike the book, the Bobaton carriage and Durmstrang ship are not seen as soon as they arrive at Hogwarts. In the book, the other schools don't arrive till October in time for Halloween. From this point, Dumbledore in the Great Hall makes the announcement of the Triwizard Tournament. He also enacts an age restriction to assure students' safety as people have died in this tournament in the past. Looking at the delegation from Bobaton, their school headmistress is Madame Olymp Maxime, who arrives in a carriage being flown by giant white Palomino horses. We first saw this in Lego form back in 2019. This is one of the more obscure and surprising sets from the theme, at least in my opinion, due to this vehicle only getting a few seconds of screen time in the film. Though with this set, we did get another variant for Madame Maxime, as well as a better version of Fleur and we got her little sister Gabrielle for the very first time. As for other students from the school, we have yet to see any in Lego form. Next arrives the Durmstrang ship with Headmaster Igor Kakarov. The Durmstrang ship has only appeared once in Lego form back in 2005. I'm surprised that we still haven't gotten a remake of it yet in the current reboot line, especially would have been nice to release alongside the Bobaton carriage. The only student that we have seen for Durmstrang is Victor Crumb, with variants from both 2005 and 2019. Also have to say I prefer the 2005 face print over the 2019 reuse we got. Can always cross our fingers for a new one in the future. And as for Kakarov, we only got him back in 2005, and if we don't see him in a future Durmstrang ship, we will most definitely see him in a CMF sometime in the future. Late arrival, just like in the books, is Professor Alistair Moody, a retired aura taking 
picking up a spot of defense against the dark arts teacher. We have only gotten him twice in Lego form, once back in 2005, then again recently in the 2018 CMF. Mr. Filch brings the Goblet of Fire to the front of the Great Hall. This has been represented twice in LEGO form, first one being a weak Goblet of Fire back in 2019, and a really great build with sparkly blue flames in the 2020 Advent Calendar. Dumbledore continues his speech about the tournament, saying if chosen, there is no turning back. Transitioning to Moody's first defense against the Dark Arts class that we see represented in the 2019 Clock Tower, the class focuses on the unforgivable curses that Moody says will win you a one-way ticket to Azkaban. Any questions? The unforgivable curses are as follows. The Imperious Curse to Control, the Cruciatus Curse for Torture, Avada Kedavra, the Killing Curse, where Harry is singled out as the sole survival of said curse. Neville Longbottom was also affected by Moody's performance of the Cruciatus Curse, with tragedies in Neville's past. His parents got it performed on them, making them lose their minds and have to live at St. Mongo's Hospital. We now skip forward past the introduction of Spew to the Weasley twins placing their names into the goblet. They both make an aging potion and try to fool the goblet, but Dumbledore's age line gives them identical beards, and might I add, that would be fun to see in a future CMF. On Halloween night, the three champions get selected. From Bobaton, we have Fleur Delacour. From Durmstrang, we have Victor Crumb. And the Hogwarts champion is Cedric Diggory. But with a flicker flame, one more note comes out of the goblet revealing Harry Potter. Harry was shocked as he did not put his name in the goblet. As Harry leaves the Great Hall, everyone is staring, and as he reaches the chamber off the hall, the trophy room, the three champions are confused to his being there. Dumbledore then comes running in with some other teachers. Now, this is better represented in the books. Unfortunately, Ron doesn't believe that Harry didn't put his name in the Goblet of Fire. Hermione tries to bring them back together, but it doesn't work till after the first task. During a photo shoot, we see Reader Skeeter, Daily Prophet reporter for the very first time. In the book, Harry was able to escape potions for this brought there by Colin Creevy. Harry and Rita do a small interview in a broom cupboard. Rita uses her quick quotes quill, which turns Harry's errors into fake sentences. Harry eventually gets a message back from Sirius saying to meet him at midnight in the Gryffindor common room to talk face to face about his problems. This event in the book takes place after he sees the dragons for the first task from Hagrid. During the conversation, Sirius says that Kakaroff was a Death Eater and that Barty Crouch sent his own son to Azkaban. Ron told me to tell you that Seamus heard from Dean who was told by Parvati that Hagrid is looking for you. Harry goes to see the dragons for the first task with Hagrid and his date, Madame Maxime. The dragons were brought to Hogwarts from Romania. We also see Ron's brother, Charlie, at this point in the book. Another part of the book that made it into the films are the Potter Stink badges given out by Malfoy. At this point, we see the two getting ready for a fight, but then comes Professor Moody with the greatest lesson of all. Draco Malfoy, the amazing bouncing ferret. The next day, Harry tells Cedric that the first task is dragon. In the book, Harry catches him before his charms class, breaking his bag. This leads to a conversation in Moody's office where Harry gets the idea of what to do for the first task. The first task of the Triwizard Tournament has been represented twice in LEGO form, first in 2005, then again recently in 2019, this time including all four champions. Within the 2019 set, we also get the tent for the champions to congregate before the start of the task. In the tent, the champions select their dragons, Fleur, Welsh Green, Crum, Chinese Fireball, Diggory, Swedish Short Snout, and Harry, the Hungarian Horntail. The goal of the task is to collect the golden egg. That will include a clue for the next task. The stands in rocky terrain seen during the first task was best represented in the 2005 set. In the book, we hear a little bit more about how the other champions faced their dragons, but Harry uses a summoning charm, Axio, to get his Firebolt and allow him to get past the Horntail and get the golden egg. Harry is also the fastest to do so, and after the first task, Harry joins a party in the Gryffindor common room, where Ron believes Harry didn't put his name in the Goblet of Fire, and they are friends again. During the party, Harry opens the egg to see what the clue could be, only to hear a loud screeching noise that sounds like Percy singing in the shower, as George says, lol. With the first task completed and the second one a few months away, Professor McGonagall announces the Yule Ball. One scene that you can recreate if you own the 2020 advent calendar 
is when Ron and McGonagall dance as seen in the film. Harry is having problems getting a date, Hagrid goes with Madame Maxime, Fred and George already have someone, even Neville is going with Ginny, Hermione, we'll talk more about that later. Harry asks Cho Chang to the Yule Ball, but she's already going with Cedric. Ron gets up the courage to speak to Fleur Delacour, but she rejected him as he ran away. Harry then goes up to Parvati Patil and asks to go to the ball, and then gets her sister Padma, who's in Ravenclaw, to go with Ron. At the start of the ball at 8 o'clock on Christmas Day, we find Hermione was going to the ball with Victor Crumb. When it comes to the Yule Ball and its representation in LEGO, we first saw Harry in his Yule Ball outfit in a book from 2011, but a few years later, come 2019, we saw nine different characters represented in their Yule Ball outfits. In 2020, we got three more new characters to help complete the scene. Some characters that we have yet to get in their Yule Ball outfits that I would really love to see someday include Roger Davis, who is Fleur's date, as well as Neville and Ginny that I doubt LEGO would ever be able to make as good as otherworldly customs on Instagram. The champions are usually the first to start off the dance. We also get a look at the weird sisters during the Yule Ball. So far we have only seen them referenced as a sticker used in the 2020 Burrow set. Hermione is angry at Ron for saying that she is fraternizing with the enemy. She then sends Harry and Ron off to bed. One event shown in the books that doesn't occur within the films is that of Reader Skeeter reporting on Hagrid being a half giant. As much as I'd love to get into this, it's not something I have time to talk about. Harry still hasn't figured out his egg clue. He decides to take up Cedric's advice and take a bath. With this, Harry also decides to use the Prefect's bathroom. This particular location at Hogwarts was first represented in the 2019 Clock Tower set. Within the bathroom, we also see the ghost of Moaning Myrtle, who we just recently saw in the Series 2 CMF. Myrtle helps Harry with his egg by sharing what she saw Cedric doing, telling him to open it in the water where we hear the lake song, saying that Harry would have to recover a lost item from the Mer people. After these events in the book, Harry is using the Marauder's Map to get back to bed, and he notices the name Barty Crouch running around Snape's office. Wanting to investigate, he forgets to jump the missing stair, making him drop the map, almost lose the cloak and the egg to split open, calling Filch to the scene. Along with Filch also comes Snape, looking for whoever broke into his office, and Moody, who just happens to be able to see through invisibility cloaks. Moody works to smooth the whole thing over, retrieving Harry's stuff and sending Snape back to bed. Moody then asks Harry if he saw who broke into Snape's office, where he responds, Mr. Crouch. This seems to worry Moody, but Harry doesn't know why yet. Having only 10 days left to figure out how to hold his breath underwater for an hour, Harry was in trouble. He spent every waking moment in the library till the very last day before the task. In the movie, Neville helps Harry by giving him Gillyweed to help him survive underwater for an hour. In the book, Gillyweed is given to him by Dobby. And so begins the second task that has only been seen once back in 2005. I feel like it is very likely that we could be getting a remake soon, if not this year, definitely next year. Within the lake, we see Grindelow's previously seen in Lupin's class, at least in the book, as well as in the Lego Harry Potter video game. Fleur gets attacked by Grindelow but gets rescued, and then Harry is the first to arrive to the stolen items or people. Harry is meant to only take his one friend Ron, but he waits to make sure that everyone gets their hostage. Cedric comes next to take Cho Chang, Victor comes third and gets Hermione using Transfiguration to give him a shark head, and then when Harry sees that Fleur didn't come, he threatens the Mer people with his wand and takes both Ron and Fleur's sister Gabrielle to the surface. With the champions and their hostages back to the surface, Dumbledore speaks to the chief of the Mer people to find out what happened. Harry and Cedric tie for first place, Crumb at second, and then Fleur in last place. After the task, the trio with Hagrid are wandering the grounds. At this point, Harry finds Mr. Crouch unconscious in the forest. In the book, this is seen after discussing the third task where Harry and Crumb have a talk about Hermione. When they find Mr. Crouch, he sounds mad, talking to a tree that he thinks is Percy Weasley. Harry goes to Dumbledore's office to get help, where they come back to the forest to find Crumb stunned and Mr. Crouch gone. Combining some events seen in both the film and the book, 
Harry goes to visit Dumbledore's office one more time after experiencing a nightmare about Voldemort during a divination class. When Harry arrives, Dumbledore leaves with Moody and Fudge to go down where they found Mr. Crouch. Harry, meanwhile, becomes transfixed with the pensive, a storage of Dumbledore's memories. Harry is tossed headfirst into a courtroom scene showing the trial of Igor Kakarov. In the book, we also see the trial of Ludo Bagman, Bellatrix Lestrange, and Barty Crouch Jr. Harry is then taken out of the pensive by Dumbledore who wishes him luck on the third task. The third and final task has never been fully represented in LEGO form. When it comes to the maze, I don't see this ever getting made. The goal of the task is to get to the center of the maze and to get the Triwizard Cup. The champions enter in order of highest to lowest points. Hagrid also provides various creatures within the maze, though we don't see them within the film. Harry and Cedric enter first and take separate directions, then Crumb and then Fleur. The teachers are standing outside the maze, including Moody who is taking out everyone but Harry to leave his way clear. Crumb is put under the Imperious Curse to take out Fleur Delacour, who Harry sends up red sparks to save from the situation. Crumb then tries to take out Cedric, but Cedric overpowers him. Eventually, both Harry and Cedric are racing for the cup, but Harry goes back to save Cedric after he falls, at least in the film, but within the book he's attacked by a spider. The cup is a portkey that takes them to the graveyard of Little Hangleton, where Harry sees the tombstone of Tom Riddle Sr. Wormtail is there and kills Cedric. Harry is forced to be binded to the tombstone and then begins the rebirth of Lord Voldemort. The scene of the graveyard has been represented twice in Lego form, once in 2005 and then again in 2019. I personally like the 2005 version better only because it's a lot bigger than the 2019 one. I also think both sets feature decent minifigure selections, though due to Cedric dying in this scene, he is not included in either sets, but still found his way within the first CMF series. The 2019 set also includes the ingredients to bring Voldemort back, Bone of the Father unwillingly given, Flesh of the Servant willingly sacrificed, and Blood of the Enemy forcibly taken. Lord Voldemort is reborn again. Voldemort is robed by Wormtail in the book, but is born with robes on in the film. He then gets his wand from Wormtail, gives him a silver hand, and presses his dark mark to summon the other Death Eaters to the graveyard. Only a few Death Eaters return after 13 years as if it was only yesterday. Voldemort is very disappointed that none of his followers went looking for him after his fall from power. Some of the named Death Eaters we see in the film include Crab, Goyle, McNair, and Malfoy, the later two having seen minifigures. Voldemort gives a speech and tells the story of why he couldn't kill Harry before and how things have changed. Voldemort gives Harry back his wand and they duel. Voldemort tortures Harry with the Cruciatus Curse, but he fights back. They then cast their spells at the same time the twin cores unite, creating Creating Priori and Cantartum, bringing ghostly memories of previous murders Voldemort committed, including Harry's parents and Cedric, who asks him to bring his body back to his parents. The spell breaks, Harry runs to Cedric's body and uses a summoning charm on the Triwizard Cup to get back to Hogwarts. They arrive back using the portkey, and everyone notices that something is wrong. Cedric Diggory is dead, and Harry tells Dumbledore that Voldemort has returned. Moody takes Harry away from Dumbledore revealing that he isn't who he said he is. They go to Moody's office where he locks the door and makes Harry tell him everything. Also at this time, Moody has forgotten to take his Polyjuice potion in the film. In the book, this scene is done very differently. He searches for more potion. Moody explains how he led Harry through all the tasks and how he put his name into the Goblet of Fire to bring Voldemort back to life. Suddenly, Dumbledore, McGonagall, and Snape come to the rescue, and they force him to take Veritas Serum to tell them everything and to reveal the real Moody's location, where he was locked at the bottom of the fake Moody's trunk, who was really Barty Crouch Jr. In the book, after the interrogation of Barty Crouch Jr., Dumbledore sets tasks for both Snape and McGonagall and escorts Harry to his office, where he wants to hear Harry's side of the story. Also up in Dumbledore's office is Sirius transformed in his Animagus form. After retelling the story for the second time, Dumbledore finally brings Harry down to the hospital wing where Ron, Hermione, Mrs. Weasley, and Charlie are waiting for him. Madame Pomfrey, who I have to say yet again, we need in minifigure form, come on Lego, gives Harry a potion to help him sleep after the events of the night. When Harry woke back up a few hours later, Mr. Fudge reveals his true colors by not believing that Voldemort has returned. With this, after Fudge has 
was left, Dumbledore gives out more tasks, including revealing that Sirius was on their side and that Sirius and Snape would have to work together. He sent Charlie out to contact Mr. Weasley at the Ministry, who'd be able to make more contacts there. He then sent Sirius to contact more members of the Order of the Phoenix, and Snape went out to do a secret task that we'll talk more about in a future video. On the last day, Dumbledore gives a speech on Cedric and how he died being murdered by Lord Voldemort, saying that the Ministry wouldn't want him to tell them that. At the end of the film, however, Dumbledore visits Harry in the Gryffindor dormitory, which pretty much already cover the events from the book. Dark and difficult times lie ahead. Make the choice of what is right, not what is easy. Remember, Cedric. The Bobaton and Durmstrang students leave Hogwarts. Konkaroff left the night of the third task after feeling his dark mark burn, not wanting to rejoin Voldemort. And Ron goes after Crumb for his autograph as another year ends. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you know anyone who should do good with a little more Harry Potter knowledge, send them my way. I plan on doing a video like this for the entire story. As always, if you feel like there's anything missing or just want to shout your opinion, feel free to do so in the comments below. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now and I will see you next time. Bye!